So in the previous video, we talked about the $63 internet in a box pre-built option, but how do we actually get our own content onto this device? Well, that's exactly what we're going to cover today, so let's get started. First, let's check out the wiki for internet in a box and the default passwords. Now this section has all the good information on what the passwords are for different content modules, as well as the admin console for IIAB itself. So we're going to make a note of these passwords and then log in to the admin portal and start to get to work. At the admin portal, you will enter in those default uh, username and passcode. Now I apologize, my video grabbing software was not working exactly as it was supposed to for some of this video, but it did capture all the main important stuff. So bear with us, we're going to work through it. So here we are in the admin console under Wi-Fi control. You can see that we have connected to the local Wi-Fi network. This is possible because the Wi-Fi up down true was enabled and is enabled in that wiki internet in a box device. And once you connect to the local Wi-Fi network, reboot the device just to make sure everything is set and working properly. Log back in and you should see a screen like this that shows you connected to the local Wi-Fi network. Once your Wi-Fi is connected, we need to putty into the terminal of this device and we need to update all the packages on the system. From our device, we could tell that nothing was updated for about 10 months. So a lot of things have changed in the Linux world, Raspberry Pi world. So we need to run this command, sudo apt get update, and that will refresh all of our packages and set us up for success when we try to download additional modules that we'll need to add some of our custom content to the device. Now back in the admin console, under the install content, manage content tabs, here you can see the content that I have currently on this device. I've already messed around with it a little bit, but I deleted the wiki or Wikipedia in Spanish to free up a lot of space. But deleting a Zim is pretty easy. As you can see, just select the Zim file you want to delete and then select remove selected content. And once that's finished, you'll see all that additional space cleaned up. Now we have some room to work with. All right, so now we can add some Zim files that we actually want to, to this device. So we're in the install content for the admin console in the sub tab, get Zim files from QX. So first things first, this is an old build. So we want to refresh the QX catalog and then refresh the display just to see what we're working with. It may kind of get stuck. It is working, so let it run. It'll run through, it'll take a few seconds. But remember when we're doing all of this, we are working on a Raspberry Pi 02W. So the hardware is pretty lightweight, as I've said many times. But you gotta have a little bit of patience with this. It is working, so let it do its thing. If you kind of get frustrated and start refreshing things or you know backing and forwarding, something may get stuck, you may have to reboot it. So just let it run through. It'll download the QX catalog refresh the display and now we can browse through all of these current Zims that are available. You know, your, your needs are probably going to be a little bit different than mine. So find what you're looking for, whether it's education or preparedness, you know, some tech documents, what, whatever it may be, but select your Zim file and then scroll back up and hit that install selected Zims button. It'll run through, create a job and it'll, download, and then re-index the menu. So once it's finished, we'll be ready to go. Now, adding modules is a little bit different for this device. Here, we want to go to the admin console again in the configure tab, the sub tab, services enabled, and we can see what it came with by default. Now, we want to add a few things here, mainly the Calibre web, this lets us upload ebooks and PDFs and create bookshelves. Very nice little module. I'm also going to add Git T, just because working with these little tech projects, it's pretty handy to have your own little Git server just to clone the project repositories and have all that additional documentation. I find that very helpful. So those are the two that I'm going to add to this. 
Once you do that, you can select Save Configuration and then Install Configured Options. Once that runs through, we can go over to the Utilities tab and Display Job Status. We refresh that status and we can see that this is now processing and going through the installation process. Now, if we did not update the system originally with sudo apt get update, this is going to throw some errors, and I think Git-T will probably install correctly, but Calibre Web will not. That will get hung up. So definitely make sure we update the system before we try to install these additional content modules. Now once the modules have been successfully added, we can check in the display job status again, refresh status, and everything should say succeeded in that right-hand column. And once these modules are installed, it should populate in the menu automatically, but in my case it did not. So to fix that, we can go to the content menus, edit content menus tab, and content item list. Now here we can move things around and reposition our items exactly where we want them. And we can also add menu items that weren't added. So on the right hand side, we can search for Calibre Web, find that specific menu item, just click it, drag it over to that left hand column, just position it where we want it, and then save the menu. Once that's done, we can then go back out to the main menu, the home page, and we will see all of these things added exactly where we put them. And here we have the Calibre Web electronic books. So you can click on that and it'll bring up the sterile page for that module right here. Now we can remember back to that master password list we looked at at the beginning of this video. And from all these modules, really, the username and password is admin capital with a password of change me. That works for pretty much everything on the internet in the box. There's a couple outliers, but it's all covered in that password uh, section under the wiki. Once we're logged in as the admin, we can now upload our own custom documents. So after hitting the upload tab, we can browse on our computer to wherever we want to upload. And here I have a directory with all the files that I want to add, an assortment of PDFs and EPUB electronic books. So we can select all of them, hit open, and it will work through and start uploading. In reality, I would probably suggest doing this one at a time on a Pi Zero 2W. There just isn't a lot of horsepower on that little thing. And so that will help prevent it from getting hung up, especially if you have some larger uh, electronic books like EPUB files that can get pretty big. So one at a time, it should be able to work through them pretty well. You can try doing a batch and see what happens, but you know, shooter's preference. Once the upload is complete, it will bring you to this metadata page. It will show you the book title and any other information it has on that document. You can upload your own cover if it doesn't have one right here. And once you're finished entering all that stuff, just hit save. And it will show you the kind of overview of the book as it is available. You can read it in your browser, download the PDF, add it to a bookshelf, all that good stuff. But now back at our homepage for Calibre Web. We can see all the books that I've uploaded. Here they are. So it'll show you kind of a little grouping at the top. And then if you scroll down, you can see all of the books that are available on the system. If you want to read one, just click on it. Then you can hit read in browser and it'll open it up. Now, depending on what it is, EPUB or PDF, you know, may have some additional uh, table of contents, those things that let you jump around. Otherwise, you can just scroll around the document and you can see everything's there. So you can browse away to your heart's content. Now, once you add a lot of books, things can get a little messy. So we may want to create a bookshelf. And to do that, at the home page, we just select create a shelf. And here we can title that shelf. So maybe I want to name that comma. I want to share it with anyone who's browsing my internet in a box. And now I've created 
that bookshelf. And so from here, I can find my books that are communications related. I got to select all these books and just hit the add to shelf button. That will let me select which shelf or shelves I want to add that book to. And then it will add it to that bookshelf. So we can click on that bookshelf and now we see we have our book added to the Kamo bookshelf. One of the other really cool things about this project is we can use it as a FTP server and share all kinds of files. But first we need to enable the root account. So putty back in to the device, type in sudo iiab-root-login and then enter your password for the root account and it will enable it. Now we can use FileZilla to connect to the device and upload all kinds of files. If you don't have FileZilla, you can easily get it. It's free. Just go to the website filezilla-project.org and download the FileZilla client for your system. Now when you run FileZilla, it'll bring up a window that looks a lot like this. And at the top, just type in the host, which will be the device you want to connect to, its IP address. So that will be our internet in a box's IP address. That username is root, enter that password that you set, and port will be 22, and hit quick connect. Now on the right hand side, it shows you the file system for your target device, and the left is your system that you're logged into, or your main computer. So on the right hand side, for the internet in the box, we're going to browse to that directory, library, www, html, local content. Now we can see that's empty right now. So now on the left hand side, we can browse our uh, file system and find the files we want to upload. So I'm going to create a little kind of app store. And I have a folder with my Android APK files. So I'm going to select all of those and add to queue. So at the bottom we can see where it's coming from and where those files are going. Everything looks right. Then we can right click on that and select process queue. And it will go through and transfer all of these files and build those directories on that destination. So we should be able to access all of these from our internet in a box. And we'll let that run. Probably take a minute. A lot of files, and we'll come back to this. But you can use this also for almost anything, even video files. Now that our FileZilla is transferring those files over, we need to actually add the USB menu item, which is not going to be for a USB, but it's what we need in this case to access that directory. So we'll go back to the content menu, the content item list, and we're going to find that USB menu item, drag it over to the left-hand side, save our menu, and that's how we're going to access all these files. So with our menu updated and everything's transferred, we're back at our Internet in the Box homepage. As we can see, the insert a USB stick drive to publish files here. That is what we need. This isn't just for USBs, it is also for any content that we added to that local content directory. We click on that. We can see I've got two directories here. One is for my Android APK files. So I can browse all of these. And there's my ATEC APK. So if I want to download that to my device that I'm browsing Internet in Box with, just click on that and it'll download it. So this way I could configure any Android device pretty easily just by connecting to this Internet in a Box. Now, before I mention video files, here we can see I have a couple of video files hosted. Just click on it, and as long as it isn't anything crazy, you know, like 1080 or 4K, it should be able to direct play it to the device. So if you have some basic videos, and you want to set up a little media server, that's a pretty easy way to do it. Scrolling down, you can see our Calibre Web electronic books. Again, here we have all of those books that we had gone through previously and added to the the device. Just need to click on something for my browse. I think maybe do an EPUB book because I didn't do that last time. And here we can see backyard tree houses. Pretty fun little book. 
in case you ever want to build a backyard treehouse. But this is kind of what it looks like when it pulls up the EPUBs. So pretty handy. I know a lot of you guys out there have a pretty extensive off-grid library. This is a good way to publish it and make it available to anybody that's accessing your device. And scrolling down, you can see just the menu of all of the devices, or not all the devices, all of the ZIM files and everything else that I have customized and added to this particular Internet in a Box. So now, even with all of that added content, we can go to our utilities under the admin console, and you can see I still have 28 gigs of space available. I'm only at 89% of capacity. It's not too bad, really. I mean, this is a lot of data and information that's available on this device. And this is a pretty good buffer zone as well when working with flash memory. If you aren't familiar with all the different kinds of ZIMs that are available on Kiwix and all the information that they publish, you can always browse to the online Kiwix library as shown here and search for a ZIM of interest and click on it and just see what it has before you go through the process of downloading it and setting it up on your local internet in a box. And definitely check out the Internet in a Box FAQ. There's a ton of good information here, a lot of good documentation. Almost any question you may have has probably been answered. And this is the place to go for the ground truth on how to do everything that this device is capable of doing. Lastly, here is one big overview kind of see all of everything that we have added to this device, which kind of helps put it in perspective on all the additional information that we've added to and have been able to customize this device with. Again, it's amazing. This is all free. The device itself, pre-built, $63 from the Wikimedia store. People ask why we give Gridbase such a hard time for their pocket at $300. This is a great example of why we are so passionate about this. That pocket for 300 bucks, it's locked in. It's a, only a Kiwix server. You can't add your own content to it. You're really limited in your options. This thing, pre-built at 63 bucks, even cheaper if you build it yourself. But the pre-built makes it so easy. You can set it up, download whatever content you want, serve it, so many more applications, so many options. It's just, it's a no-brainer. Gridbase is absolutely ripping people off. He's not doing the community any favors. That wraps it up. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section, like, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.